Hello, it's Alex Wallbank here, and uh, welcome to my first Tips and Tricks video blog. Uh, firstly, I'd like to announce a big thank you and a welcome to all the new Cinematic Strings users. Uh, the first month of sales have been great, and I've received a lot of positive feedback and some very kind compliments regarding both the library and the demos on the main page. So, thanks very much for that, and uh, I'm really glad you're enjoying using the library. So, in this video, I'll be touching on EQ and tempo automation. Uh, some people have asked me if I've used any external processing in the product demos and the answer to that is yes, I have used a subtle EQ curve and some reverb and I'll discuss the reverb in a later video and uh, so for now I'll start by showing you how I used EQ. I started by applying an instance of the standard 3 band EQ and contact to the master output channel that CS is routed to. Uh, generally I find that using an EQ in a master channel can help glue a mix together and this also applies to strings. So I set band 2 to 3.9 kHz uh, using a moderate bandwidth of 0.6 and cut 2 decibels. This tones down some of the strong upper mid frequencies and provides a soft character to the sound. I also set band 3 to 16 kHz with a wider bandwidth of 2 and applied a 1 decibel boost. I found that this adds a sort of lovely airy quality to the mix. And I've put together a little piece to demonstrate the effect this EQ curve has on the sound. The other thing I want to talk about is tempo mapping, or tempo automation. Uh, in a real recording environment, musicians tend to drift in and out of tempo. They might speed up for one bar and then relax the tempo the next. And this can happen because of the emotional content of a piece, you know, players might speed up in a more intense moment, uh, and of course the conductor can significantly shape the tempo too, um, even in a relatively locked tempo environment. So I find that Adding little changes in to try and mimic this behavior can greatly increase the realism and add a significant human element to your piece. And so to show you what I mean, I'll play the same piece I just played, while this time focusing on the tempo map. And as you can see, I've added subtle changes from bar to bar, occasionally slowing down to exaggerate the end of a phrase or speeding up to add some intensity to the performance. I've also included a MIDI file of this piece so you can load it into your sequencer and check it out for yourself. I've named the tracks to correspond with the patches I used in Cinematic Strings, so just load the patches, assign them to the correct channels, and you can watch the library in action. You can also take a look at the MIDI CC data and see how it performed individual parts. So that's it for this video, uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more video walkthroughs in the future. If you have any questions or would like to request a walkthrough, just leave a comment below. Cheers, and uh, happy composing. See ya.